Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank God. Well, you know, it's Wednesday, and you know, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a part two. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we're going to go into this word tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to go deeper into the word, deeper into what God is saying and what God is doing. Amen. So I'm going to be teaching. Amen. Watch this part two. Watch this. Watch this part two. How many know, like I said earlier, God gives us, um, he gives us, uh, he said, I won't have you ignorant of the enemy's devices. And, and one of the things that God does is he equips us through the word of God and he exposes things for us to be, amen, watchful for so that we can be equipped, so that we can know how to deal. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, to, to have some things in your arsenal, to have some things, amen, hallelujah, uh, that you hold on to. When things come up, praise God, or, uh, you know, before they come up, that you are already equipped. And so I just thank God for the preceding word that goes forth. Amen. I'm going to uh, hit something. Amen. That, that we touched on a little bit on Sunday. I want to go a little deeper in it, and we're going to go a little deeper in the word. All right. Somebody just type in, watch this. Amen. Watch this. Praise God. All right. Numbers 13, chapter, verse 2 through 4. Numbers 13, verse 2 through 4, and then we're going to skip down to verse 27 through 33. Numbers 13, verse 2 through 4, and then we're skipping down verse 27 through 33. And it reads, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. So that the Lord's uh, command, Moses sent them out of the desert of Paran. All of them were leaders of the Israelites. And they gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there, the Amalekites that live in the Neve, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live, uh, live near the sea and along the Jordan. Praise God. Uh, and, and we skip down. It says, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they explored. And they said, the land uh, we explored devours those living in it. And all the people we saw there are a great size. We saw Niflim there, the descendants of Anak that come from Niflim, and we seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. All right. So one of the things that uh, we begin to deal with on Sunday, bless the Lord, is OCD, uh, obsessive comparison disorder, praise God. And we begin to dismantle uh the dangers of comparison, and the dangers of the spirit of jealousy. Uh, OCD, obsessive comparison disorder. And so the spies sent by Moses uh, allowed their view of others to cause them to see themselves as grasshoppers. Uh, the King James Version said, we are like grasshoppers in our own sight, and we look the same to them. Hallelujah. And so based on what they saw, based on how they compared, glory to God, uh, it caused them to walk in an obsessive comparison disorder, bless the Lord, because they didn't see correctly. I said this to you, because they didn't see correctly, the children of Israel did not enter the promised land and ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. They didn't enter the promised land because they didn't believe right things about God. And they didn't enter because they didn't believe right things about themselves. See, if you don't believe, uh, if you don't believe him about you, then you won't believe right things about what you're called to do, what you can have, and what you can walk in. If you don't see a thing correctly... You can't be the thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I wonder how many of us have missed provision and the promise of God in our own life. How many of us overlook what God has given and is giving? 
praise God, and we will simply uh, just remain because we are not seeing correctly. They went in, didn't see correctly, and, and it messed up their mentality, praise God, of what they felt they could walk in uh, even though God had promised it. See, if you see yourself wrong, you will see yourself retreating. You will pull back. If you don't see it correctly, if you don't see it as greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, then you will be operating in fear. Glory to God. If you don't believe that he that dwelleth in the secret place has protection, glory to God, then you'll walk around uncovered. Come on. Hallelujah. If you don't see it as my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, then you'll always be uh, uh, in fear of money and, and fear of having and, and fear of being provided for. Hallelujah. If you see yourself wrong, you will see yourself retreating. Why? Because you can't follow Jesus if you're comparing yourself to someone else. I'm going to say that again. You can't follow Jesus if you're comparing yourself to someone else. Who are you following? Someone else or are you following Jesus? Come on. The Bible says look into him. The author and finisher of my faith. So it's no, no, it's, it, it doesn't matter what those around me are doing or even what enemies are doing or even things that's coming against me is doing. Glory to God. I can't follow Jesus if I'm comparing myself. Glory to God. Holly, you got to be like Zerubbabel. Who are you, O great mountain? You're going to be brought low. Praise God. I'm not intimidated by the mountain. I'm looking at the God who will level the mountain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not looking at the fact that I'm in trouble. I'm looking at the fact that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Glory to God. So our eyes are what causes us to be messed up. Our eyes are the key to our healing. And if you really want to be free, you have to walk into it. Caleb, I said this on Sunday, Caleb saw differently. Joshua and Caleb are the only two out of 12 who entered the promised land simply because they saw correctly. Glory to God. They thought correctly. They saw correctly and they believed correctly. See, unless you see yourself correctly, you will be overcome with OCD. The issues is if we don't see ourselves correctly, then we'll see ourselves as inferior. Come on. Glory to God. And you will see, you will see others as superior or vice versa. Glory to God. How do you get it right? You have to look right. And OCD or that comparison issue is cured when we manage our mirrors. Here's my first point tonight. Manage your mirrors. Manage your mirrors. Praise God. What are you saying, Bishop? OCD, you kill that spirit of comparison when we look right. You say, wait a minute, that sounds messed up. You've been saying that we get messed up with comparison. Glory to God. Then, then Bishop, how are you talking about looking right? Glory to God. Because sometimes looking, looking right keeps us trapped. Yeah, because we feel like we have to you do, uphold this image. I have to look happy and look as successful as the other person. Come on. I have to look, I have to, I have to look right to live up to societal demands. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That isn't what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is the cure for OCD is looking right. Not just looking in the natural, but looking through the eyes of faith. Getting your eyes off the wrong thing and onto the right thing. Come on. Glory to God. That's how you get over that comparison thing. I, I put, I take my eyes off the wrong thing and put it unto the right thing. In other words, the cure of OCD is we manage our mirrors. We manage what we look at. We manage what we say about ourselves. Hallelujah. And Paul tells us what the standard is not. Can I teach tonight? Paul tells us what the standard is not. Give me 2 Corinthians verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 12 through 14. Paul tells us what the standard is not. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12 through 14. We do not dare classify or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, 
they are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond proper, limitate, proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us, a sphere that also includes you. But we're not going too far in our boasting, as, as would be the case if we had not come to you, for we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ Jesus. All right. So in other words, what is this text saying? Glory to God. See, they were only comparing themselves with each other. Watch this. Using themselves as a standard of measurement. How ignorant. Come on, glory to God. See, the people around us is not the standard. That's the wrong mirror. Glory to God. Paul says that when we use the other person as the standard, we're ignorant. Praise God. Comparing ourselves to those around us is like looking in a funhouse mirror trying to get a clear picture of who you are. Glory to God. The standards we are trying, glory to God, the standards that we're trying to use keeps us changing. Because we're trying to measure ourselves by someone else, glory to God, by what's going on around us. And, and OCD is running rampant and it's at an epidemic levels because we are looking to the wrong mirror. We're looking at the wrong thing. We're trying to figure out, glory to God, who we are by comparing ourselves to others. <coughs> Come on, glory to God, by comparing ourselves to others. Come on, watching social media, watching Instagram, watching Facebook, watching Twitter, glory to God, by allowing Hollywood or society to tell us who we are when sometimes they don't even know who they are. Glory to God. Sometimes people don't even know in this hour, they don't even know what gender they are. Can I talk? Why would we allow those who have no clue who they are to tell us who we are? Glory to God. You got to beware of the comparison trap. And the media is constantly bombarding us with images of so-called the perfect man. And you told you're supposed to look like this, and we're supposed to dress like this, and we're and we're buying into a false image of what it takes, hallelujah, to be a man to feel right about ourselves. And, and when you look at yourself and compare yourself to that image promoted by television or whatever you see by great surprise, you see you don't measure up. And then you 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 know you you know you you try to you know try to kill yourself almost trying to fit into this image. Glory to God, a firmer physique. Hallelujah. Glory to God, trying to kill yourself in the gym, trying to get bulging biceps and and washboard stomach. Glory to God, like the bodybuilders on television. And sometimes you know you working for stuff you ain't never had. Come on here. Glory to God. At some point, you just got to be comfortable in the skin you in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to say, I'm trying to be fit for me. I'm not trying to be fit for nobody else. I'm not trying to look like nobody. Oh, can I talk in here? Some of you ain't never had a six-pack. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And sometimes you got to say, if I can just get down slim enough. Come on, can I talk? Glory to God. But I'm not going to run after an image that's not even my body type. I'm not going to run after an image, glory to God, that say this is the way I have to be. I want to be good. I want to be healthy. I want to be whole for myself. But I'm not going to do so comparing myself to somebody else. Glory to God. You'll waste a tremendous amount of time and effort chasing an illusion in an attempt to raise yourself to a standard to which you're comparing yourself. Come on. Not just for men, the same true as for women. Glory to God. Have an idea what the perfect woman is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And she looks nothing like anyone you know in real life. Starving yourself, come on, cannot create what nature has not supplied. I said starving yourself, cannot create what nature has not su supplied. Glory to God, hallelujah. And then you have folk in guilt of, and denial concerning physical appearance. Glory to God, hallelujah. And folk halfway in depression. Glory to God because trying to fit in an image or trying to fit in a box. And that not only affects your body, but your mind and your emotions suffer as well. 
Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you don't know how much depression is hitting people caused by trying to fit into a false image. It's simply not fair. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not God's will for you or I to be caught up in a devastating quest to measure up to a phony standard of perfection. Oh, I'll say it again. It's not God's will, hallelujah, for us to get caught up in the devastating quest to measure up to a phony standard of perfection. I am who God says I am. Glory to God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew what he was making when he made you. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he did not intend for us to endlessly compare ourselves with images. Those are not his standards. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said those are not his standards. And we get frustrated by the lack of success in measuring up. Glory to God. And the real inner knowledge. Glory to God that such standards are false. Glory to God. And then you want to critique and you want to tear folks down. Glory to God. Stay in your own lane. Be who God has called you to be and be the best version of yourself for the glory of God. Because if you don't get, if you don't be careful, and that's what the scripture was saying in 2 Corinthians, we're not comparing ourselves based on ourselves, we shouldn't be doing that. And you have to check it because the spirit of competitive jealousy is subtle and it's a very active enemy if you don't check it. Watch this, watch it, watch it. It will provoke a person to compete for favor, position, authority, influence, and this unnecessary competition sidetracks us from seeking the true goals that God desires for us to have. I said competitive jealousy causes us to lower our standards from the divine. Come on here. Into the false image and corrupt images that the world promotes. I say you lower your standards from the divine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you want to be like a worldly model instead of a godly model. I can't get nobody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the next point. See yourself correctly. Type that in. See yourself correctly. See yourself correctly. Glory to God. You don't be depressed. Listen, come on. Depending on your body type, make, model, in some stores you will never be able to shop in. It just don't fit. Come on, glory to God. You don't get depressed, glory to God, because you can't shop over there. They don't make clothes for you. Come on. You got to find who you are. Stay in your lane. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Still feel good about Still look good, but you got to find what works for you. Not being depressed because sometimes you got to tell folks, that works for you. That don't work for me. See yourself correctly. And if we're going to cure this OCD, we must see ourselves correctly. We must love ourselves correctly. Glory to God. And to see yourself correctly, you have to have the right reflection. Oh, teach tonight, Bishop. I said, if you're going to see yourself correctly, you have to have the right reflection. To have the right reflection, you got to look in the right mirror. Ah, you, you got to manage your mirror. What is the right mirror? What is the standard? I submit to you that God's word is the right mirror. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God's word is like a mirror. Come on here. Oh, can I talk to you tonight? We don't just read the Bible. Glory to God. As you read the word, it reads you. Woo! <laughs> I said, we don't just read the Bible, but as you read the word, it reads you. Oh, my God. And just as a mirror reflects what you look like on the outside, God's word reflects what you look like on the inside. And that's why you must see yourself in the word. 
It ain't I got my own relationship with God. It's not I'm doing my own thing. I'm, it's not that I'm doing what works for me. I got to find myself in the word of God. My God. Hallelujah. One man said the fundamental purpose of God's word is to give us uh, true self-knowledge. It is a real mirror. And when we look at ourselves properly in it, we see ourselves, watch this, as God wants us to see ourselves. Because if I can just get about 10 real people in here, the word of God, it will expose your weaknesses. The word will expose your strengths. Come on. The word will expose your identity. Come on. The word will expose the false idols of your heart. Come on. The word will expose who you are and who you're not. Come on here. But you got to be around the word. You got to get in the word. Glory to God. Can I teach tonight? Because I feel like teaching. The perfect illustration and example of this is Jesus. Let, let, let's look at Jesus. Jesus saw himself Correctly. My God, hallelujah. I said Jesus saw himself correctly with no arrogance or pride, but he said about himself, I am the way, I am the truth. In other words, Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth. He didn't compare himself to others. He just knew who he was and he said who he was. I'm the way and I'm the truth. Hear me. He didn't say, I'm more of the way than they are. Come on. Or I'm more of the truth than they are. Woo! He just said, I am the way and I am the truth. See, some of you got to cut off them taglines acting like you better than or more than. Come on. Just know what God says about you. Sit in your truth and be who God called you to be. Just be anointed. You ain't got to say, I, I, I'm more anointed than they are. Just, just be anointed. Glory to God. I'm more prosperous than they are. Come on. I, I'm just prosperous. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to sit in it. In other words, the word knew who he was. He knew who he was. So he doesn't need to compare himself to anyone else. Oh, can I say that again? Because it's rich. G the word knew who Jesus was. He knew who he was. So he doesn't need to compare himself to anyone else. You got to be like this in this hour. I am who I am by the grace of God, period. Ah, it ain't got nothing to do with you. I'm not above you. It takes nothing away from you. But I am who I am by the grace of God. I'm God's man. I'm God's woman. I'm a child of God. I know who I am. Woo, my God, hallelujah. And here is the challenge, because if you don't know who the word says you are, then you will allow other people and their opinions right or wrong to become the standard. Ooh, I need to pause right there. I need to pause right there. Sila, sila, sila. Glory to God. I said, if you don't know who the word says you are, then you will allow other people's opinions right or wrong, to become the standard. And you became that or settled for that because you didn't know who, who God says you are. Hallelujah. And this is what I found out, folks. This is what I found out. If you really knew what God has in mind for you, you would never be jealous of anyone else. Oh, Lord. I said, if you knew what God had in mind for you, you would never be jealous of anyone else. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, see, folks that's jealous must not have the revelation of what God has promised and what God has said. You know, we sing these songs in church, my God is big, my God is strong, and so mighty his plans for me goes beyond my wildest dream. So if he got big plans for me, if Jeremiah 29 and 11 applies to my life, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. If you really believe that, you, you, you would be jealous of nobody. If his plans go beyond my wildest dreams, 
If I really had the revelation, glory to God, that God is good and he's good to me. How, if you knew what God had in mind for you, you would never be jealous of anyone else. I told you on Sunday, we all got a place in the kingdom. Hallelujah. God's a big God. He can bless me and you at the same time. He can heal me and you at the same time. He can bless my children and yours at the same time. If, if you really believe that his plans for you go beyond your wildest dream, if that be the case, you wouldn't be jealous. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it again. If you knew what God had in his mind for you, you'd never be jealous of anyone else. Because you be content in the fact that what God has for me, it is for me. And he didn't bless me according to his will, according to his purpose, and according to his destiny for my life. And, you know, and I found out something. You never know the pain, sweat, tears, attacks, rejection, losses, adversity that one has endured to carry the anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I, I will never understand jealousy. Glory to God, because it means you, you didn't sacrifice to obtain what you covet from somebody else. Glory. Are you mad at somebody else's anointing, jealous of someone else's anointing? But you don't know the pain, the sweat, the tears, the attacks, the rejection, the adversity that, that, that the one had to endure to carry that anointing. See, their anointing may kill you because you're not equipped to house it. Ah, because the anointing comes as a result of a crushing. So you jealous of my anointing, but really, glory to God, hallelujah, you should be jealous of my pain, glory to God. And so when you honor the anointing on someone's night, you're really honoring the fact that they survived and they are surviving. When you honor the anointing on someone's life, I don't just honor all the glory and the power that's on your life. I honor the process that you went through. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because the anointing comes with a price. And so I, I, I should have no business trying to covet. Glory to God, your anointing, when I don't know the price that you paid to carry what you paid. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not jealous of your anointing. I didn't sacrifice to obtain it. I'm not trying to covet what God has given you. I didn't go through the hell that you went through to walk in what you walk it in. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we have to move into that place. See, OCD is broken when we allow God to introduce us. Hallelujah. To the us that he created us to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's broken. See, Joshua and Caleb came back and said, you know what? I see them over there, but I don't compare myself to them. We're well able to overcome them. Glory to God. I'm not in a comparison match. Glory to God. Because if I got in my flesh, I could be intimidated because they are bigger than us. Glory to God. It's just something brand new. It's a new territory. But I'm not, I'm not comparing myself to my enemy. Hallelujah. I'm banking on what God has said about me. I'm banking on what I know that God has put on the inside of me. I said, I said, Lord, why am I teaching this? Hallelujah. Because he said there's a deadly spirit at work. It's a force that's doubly dangerous because it's subtle, competitive jealousy. And if we allow it to operate unchecked in your life, it'll destroy everything God wants to do. Competitive jealousy. See, when you know better, you do better. Competitive, a competition, competitive. Competitive comes from, and competition comes from the word to compete, which simply means to seek or to strive for the same as another, to carry on a contest or rivalry for a common objective. See, uh, uh, competition in itself is neither good or bad. Like anything else, it depends on uh, your perspective or your context. Can I teach tonight? Hallelujah. It, for example, there is a correct context for hate. I pray that God would give me a hate, glory to God, for the things in my life and your life that doesn't please him. Glory to God. When I hate sin, I'm walking in the fear of God. Come on here. Glory to God. In, in that context, hate is acceptable. 
However, if I hate my brother or sister, then I'm walking in sin. It all depends on the context. Glory to God. The same is true for competition. Glory to God. On the most basic level, glory to God, is striving for the same thing. Hallelujah. But it's all in how you use it. And then you have jealousy. Jealousy is the sense of uneasiness or anxiety that stems from the fear of pretense and being given to another. For example, glory to God, if a mutual friend has invited you over to their house for dinner, they invited you and not me, I might become uneasy. Now, I could get in fear trying to figure out why they preferred you over me. Glory to God. But because you're not walking according to your flesh, come on here, because you ain't got time to go down rabbit trails and get all mixed up over why this and why not, you got, and, 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 and if you don't check that, if you allow that to fester, why is that dangerous, Bishop? Because, hallelujah, if I'm not careful, I'll begin to compare myself with my brother or sister in Christ. And then you get placed to the enemy. And then an uneasiness creeps in, stemming from the fear that someone else was preferred over me. And then you try to see, well, why were they preferred over me? What is it about them that's a... And if you're not careful, if you don't check it, then a rivalry has developed. And then now exists the contest between me and them, glory to God, trying to obtain, the, 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 trying to gain the personal attention to win their approval. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so you have com com been competitive and you have jealousy. But, but if you get them two together, competitive jealousy, glory to God. Competitive jealousy is more than an emotion. It's a spirit. A spirit that, that, that has been confronting God's people since the very beginning. Why do you got to be aware, beloved? You can say, oh, no, I'm not that type of person. Why do you have to be aware? Because it was competitive jealousy that triggered Satan's forcible, forceful ejection from heaven. Yeah, he wanted to compete with God. Cain killed his brother Abel in a fit of competitive jealousy. Why did God accept this sacrifice and not mine? It was competitive jealousy that separated Jacob and Esau for many years. It was a force that moved Joseph's brothers to sell him into slavery. Oh, come on here. Glory to God. And when you allow the spirit of competitive jealousy to control your life, it'll stop you from being all that God has ordained for you to be. Because this spirit deceives you, hallelujah, and that deception blinds you from seeing who God has prepared you to be because all you're doing is competing. And when you become who God had called you to be, there is no competition because I just am who I am by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I ain't trying to take nobody's place. I'm just trying to be in the place God called me to be. I'm just singing all day long, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. That's all I got time for. Woo, I feel freedom for someone. But if I'm concentrating on why I don't measure up with Brother Jones, then I'm not fulfilling or reaching my full potential in what God wants me to achieve because all I'm focused on is why I don't measure up. And you got to be careful because competitive jealousy urges me to, it urges you to compare your clothes, your house, your financial position, even your ministry with others. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you're trying to compare yourself with different ministry gifts, and you have different anointings. Come on. You have different gifts. Come on here. Glory to God. You have different strengths and weakness, and you're trying to compare some, yourself to something you're not called to. Or you're trying to compare yourself to someone. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're a babe in something, and you want to compare yourself to someone that's seasoned. And you want to be mad at the seasoned wisdom. Listen, that person has, has walked through some things to walk in that anointing. Hallelujah. It's no comparison. It don't make no one bigger or little than. That's all in your mind. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. When, when you didn't walk in something longer, you may have more experience. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, competitive jealousy drives me to compare myself. It, 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 it cause you to compare yourself to somebody else. It'll provoke you to compete for favor, for position, for power, for authority, for influence. Sometimes you don't get mad even at people's relationships and friendship. Listen, that's history right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that's history. That, that, that's difference in relationship. That, that don't mean that you mean less to somebody. That's just a lot more history. Woo! Got a lot more stories to talk about. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You, you got to thank God. Hallelujah. You, ooh, Lord Jesus. You have to thank God that we do not remain in such a state. But God wants to rescue us from a competitive jealousy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let, let me tell you what this thing, and I'm almost done, the nature of competitive jealousy. You got to trace this thing back to its origin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's described in the book of Isaiah. Give me Isaiah 14, chapter, verse 12 through 15. Hallelujah. You got to tell folks, we're not acting funny. This is just history. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God is building on history. Come on here. And I found out something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can meet people and you just click like you've been knowing them for years. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And vice versa. But you got to stop being upset and mad and, and let, the, let the enemy get you feeling some type of way. Because all it is is to distort you from your purpose from being who God wants you to be in this time and in this season. Let's see what this take a root. Can I deal with the root? Glory to God. Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 15. How art thou uh, fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit also upon, uh, 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 upon the mount of the congregation in, in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That's what Lucifer said. Hallelujah. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. Glory to God. Look at all that, all that in that text. Hallelujah. That, 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 that the enemy said, I will ascend into the, into the heavens. I will exalt my throne. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. See, whenever you encounter a, an I minded person, I, me, I minded person, you will encounter a subtle spirit of competitive jealousy. This calls the downfall of Satan because he compared himself to the almighty God and actually believed that he could compete with the sovereign of the universe. Glory. Isn't that something? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you got to watch yourself when you keep talking about I, 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 what I'm going to do, what, what I'm going to do. Well, I, I, I. See, the world may, may call such talk confidence, but you better be careful. Glory to God, because sometimes it's pride. And what is the middle level of pride? The middle letter of pride, I. Woo, my God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. You got to watch what you talk about, what I'm going to do. Next point, glory to God, I think it's my last one. It's not all about you. And for Lucifer's folly, come on, he was cast out of the presence of God. Watch this and now seeks to spread his vile addiction to man. It's the spirit of the enemy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 and you can encounter that influence every day. Competitive jealousy is one of Satan's primary legacies to mankind. Can I talk like that tonight? Glory to God. And if you're not careful, if you don't keep yourself, your flesh under subjection, you must know the origin and the nature of the spirit to combat its influence in your life. Hallelujah. This is the same spirit, glory to God, that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. Glory to God, trying to compete with the most high. 
Woo! Sometimes you got to be grown enough and bad enough to say, you know what, I'm not going to touch that. That's not on my level. Woo! That's above my pay grade. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's above my rank. Come on. That's above my wit. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm not going to judge that. That's too high for me to judge. And why do we have to deal with that? Because, uh, because if you're not careful, there is a demonic pecking order. Ephesians 6 and 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can I teach this tonight? This makes perfectly clear that our Bible, that, that our battle, that our battle is not with one another, although it may seem that way at times. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is why the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of stronghold. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, you got to learn how to be spiritual. You got to learn how to fight things in the spirit, because if we fight back in the flesh, we lose the battle. I said, if we fight in the flesh, we lose the battle. If we try to fight back in the flesh, we lose the Bible. We lose the battle. Glory to God. We got to pull down strongholds. That's why I can't afford to keep allowing you to pull me in the flesh, to fight this in the flesh. I got to deal with this in the spirit. Because when I deal with it in the spirit, I win. Glory to God. But when you fight in the flesh, Glory to God. Hallelujah. What I'm talking to you about tonight is examining. What we examine tonight goes beyond. It's much deeper than surface relationships. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you want to fight it in the flesh. You want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the flesh. Glory to God. But you're going to keep having another battle. Keep going on in the flesh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you, ne you need to, you know, the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. I I'm dealing with deeper things tonight. Dealing with the spirit of competitive jealousy means cutting off the root of why, glory to God, uh, individuals act the way they are. See, sometimes you got to explore what motivates us to act and react. Not just that you act in that way. What's motivating you to act or react that way? Glory to God. These underlying things causes us, uh, our behaviors, glory to God. Hallelujah. To be all type of ways. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in this passage of Ephesians, the Bible talks about four classes or ranks of demonic forces. Right there in Ephesians 6 and 12, four different classes or ranks from lowest to the highest. The lowest are principalities. The highest ranks is spiritual wickedness in high places. See, sometimes you think you're fighting everything on the same level. You're not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The, the, sometimes they're, they're lower class demons. Lower class demons are the type that can cause someone to cuss, act foolishly, or spin out of control, or, you know, spit green stuff, all that type of stuff. High class demons are those that are much more sophisticated. Woo! See, some things manifest themselves real easy, and then, and then some, some type of warfare, you deal with sophisticated. They're sophisticated in their operation. Some spirits are more in, on an intellectual level. Come on. So, some things want, want to manipulate you, want to control you. Come on here. Glory to God. Want to get all up in the system. Glory to God. Like Jezebel and, 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 and spirits of Leviathan and, and all that type of thing. High class demons are more those things that are more sophisticated in their operation. See, when you're dealing with a high-ranking a high thing, glory to God, they want their work to go unnoticed until it's too late. See, some things just expose themselves, glory to God. But when you're dealing with, 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 with wickedness in high places, they want to go unnoticed until it's too late. 
Glory to God. And sometimes when stuff hit the fan, glory to God, it just hit the fan, but it's, it, it had already been working. Woo, Lord Jesus. Subtle, sophisticated. Glory to God. Sophisticated thing. Last scripture, Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 8, verse 3 through 6. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see, that's why mess ain't just mess. When it get messy, glory to God, seeds were already being planted. Discord was already been planted. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it was stuff being planted months ago, weeks ago. When stuff hit the fan, that's just the end result of it. Oh, Lord Jesus. All right, let me illustrate the nature of this, and I'm going to close this. Ezekiel 8, verse 3 through 6. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked jealousy. Oh, God. And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in plain. And then he said to me, son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way to the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, the image of jealousy was at the entry. And he said, furthermore to me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed there, that I should go off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see these great abominations. In other words, uh, here the prophet describes forces of spiritual wickedness in high places and how they reside. And in the vision Ezekiel said, he sees the seat of jealousy. God sees jealousy as an abomination in his eyes. And I told you, the Bible says where there's jealousy is, is disorder and, and, and every, hallelujah, evil thing. Glory to God. Jealousy as is cruel to the grave. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you have to move into the place. Glory, and, you, and you don't play with that. You don't play with that even in, in, in dating. Glory to God. Now, I know everybody likes to be a little fussed over, you know, and don't play with this and don't play with that. But, but when you see that folk, you're dating someone and they have a real issue with jealousy and you want to downplay it, okay, glory to God. If you don't get rid of competitive jealousy, it won't be long before other stuff starts happening. You, you don't want to even be in a relationship with somebody that feel like they have to compete with you and jealous with you. Glory to God. And jealous of who you are and jealous of the type of person you are and jealous about how, 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 you, how God has anointed you and jealous about how much money you make. And you, you better check that type of stuff at the root. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look, before it manifests into something else. Come on, because where's that competitive jet? There can be envy, there can be depression, there can be self-esteem issues. Glory to God. And you have to move into the place because if you don't deal with that, and I don't know who that's for tonight, glory to God, but I mean so possessive, you can't talk to nobody, you can't look at nobody, you're always accusing you of something, always doing this, always doing that. You can't go around your family. You, you better wake up. And, and you better break out. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. B because, 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 because jealousy is a hindrance to the blessing. I'm closing on this, but Cain and Abel, glory to God, hallelujah. Cain and Abel, they were brothers. Abel offered a sacrifice to God that Cain didn't offer. Glory to God. And when God blessed them accordingly, Cain became jealous of his brother. And the jealousy grew to the level that it made him kill his brother. What is jealousy? It is envious of someone else who has something you don't have. It's been envious of someone else's success, achievements, or breakthrough. And it's a sin to God. And it's not an attribute. Glory to God of God. Hallelujah. And it shows that such a believer is still living in the flesh. Jealousy comes from fear, insecurity, and covetedness. 
I said jealousy comes from fear, insecurity, and covetedness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's why you got to check insecurity. I don't got time to deal with this tonight. Glory to God. Because when you are jealous, it means that you're not satisfied with who you are and what you have. That's why God's been talking to us about contentment. That's why even the past few services, glory, you got to get content with where God has you, who he's made you to be. If not, you're going to be insecure. And if not, you're going to walk in fear. And if not, you're going to not be able to celebrate what God is doing in somebody else. Jealousy is the act of having uh, the desire to be like other people in beauty, riches, intellect, talent, glory to God. And when you are unable to achieve these, hallelujah. See, when you downplay what God has given you, glory, you don't think what God gave you is good enough. That's why the one, I don't have time to deal with this, the one that, 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 that didn't get as many talents as the rest of them, he wouldn't buried his. Having a spirit of jealousy shows that you're not satisfied what God has given to you and you do not appreciate it. That's why the Bible says in whatever state you're in, you ought to be content. Because if you're not content, you could be walking around, hallelujah, covered in other people's stuff. And why you need to, why you need to, why you need to understand this? Because we are blessed people. God is surrounding you with favorite people. God is about to, even the more, hallelujah, glory, that puts you in, 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 in wealth rooms and puts you around wealthy people and, and wish you were, and puts you around, glory to God, the head and not the tail. And you got to be ready to walk in them environments and not be jealous. Because God about to put you in some big rooms so that you can learn some things. But if you walk in them rooms jealous, you're going to miss the impartation. And if you're part of Hosanna Family Church, you're a part of a blessed house. You're around blessed people. You're around prosperous people. You're around anointed people. You arise, you're around wise people. You're around people that's flowing in gifts and flowing in the anointing. And if you insecure... Woo! You're going to miss what God has for you. Because even in the Bible, when they was around the prophets, they started prophesying. You're you going to miss your impartation being intimidated. So you can't walk in wealth and be jealous of it. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when you, be, and sometimes, and I'm closing, but when you become jealous, you can take an irrational decision. That's why that boy killed his brother, because he made a rational decision because of competitive jealousy. Your sense of reason will get off. God was very angry with Cain for killing his brother and placed a curse on him. Come on. If we were not jealous of his brother's blessing, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, you got blessed according to what you gave. Oh, Jesus. Don't get mad at me because I'm walking in the blessing. But I didn't just walk in the blessing. I'm walking in the fact that says to whom much is given, much is required. So you don't want that part. You look at the fact that I'm blessed. Glory to God. But you don't see what it took for me to be blessed. Come on, you don't see the seed in the ground. Come. And as children of the light, we should be happy when you're around people that's prospering. You need to rejoice with people that are rejoicing. Not in pretense, but wholeheartedly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I was talking to, uh, you know, one of our spiritual daughters after church on, on, on Sunday, and we were talking uh, Sunday before last, the healing anointing fell in our church, and people were testifying of their healing, and, and she was saying, and it came up as I was studying this. Glory to God. Uh, Mother Lewis was giving God praise, and she was caught up in the Holy Ghost and, you know, talking about how she was believing God for healing and, and things of that nature. Hallelujah. And, and somebody said, while I was was rejoicing with her while she was testifying, I had a toothache and my toothache started, stopped hurting 
as she was testifying, glory to God. But she was so caught up rejoicing with somebody else that she was rejoicing with somebody else and God touched her. See, see, this is how we do it. I don't have time to sit in services and somebody else get a prophetic word and be mad because I'm not getting one. Or somebody else getting a breakthrough and I'm mad because I'm not getting one. Or somebody else, hallelujah, is getting blessed and I'm upset because it's not me. I, all I got time to do is rejoice with them that rejoice. Because if I can rejoice with them, that re it shows me God is in the neighborhood. And it shows me I'm in real good company. Glory to God. And it shows me I'm around people with light, precious faith. 1 Corinthians 3 and 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It, it, you know, jealousy is the work of the flesh. And you should be manifesting the fruit of the spirit rather than manifesting the work of the flesh. Last scripture, I promise. 1 Corinthians 3 and 3 says, you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Or are you acting like mere men? How long have you been in Christ if you're still harboring jealousy? It show, in other words, it shows you, glory to God, you are worldly. Come on here. Glory to God. And so sometimes when you say, wait a minute, I, I got too much going on. Glory to God. Jealousy is the work of the flesh. Quarreling is work of the flesh. God, God, God you called me to come out from among them and be ye separate. God, I need you to deliver me. The New Living Translation says, for you still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with one another. Doesn't that prove that you're controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? Come on. You got to get to the place. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. I want to be what you've called me to be. I want to act how you called me to act. Glory to God. And the Bible says if you're walking according to the flesh in Romans 8 and 8, hallelujah, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you want to please God, glory to God, hallelujah, you should move away. Ask the Lord to crucify your flesh. Move away from the works of the flesh. Ah, my God. Manifest the fruit of the Spirit so that we, glory to God, hallelujah, can be who God has called us to be. And, and, and you got to check it because there's elevation on you and that's and not just on you. Glory to God. But I believe we going up together. Hallelujah. I believe he's raising us up. Glory to God. And you got to watch this. You got to watch some stuff. And you got to know how to deal with it. You got to know how to, you break that stuff up even in your families. You break that stuff up in your children. You break that stuff. Wait a minute. No, we celebrate each other. We celebrate each other. We don't feel like, well, that wasn't me. No, we celebrate each other. This is how we do it. Glory to God. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for grace tonight. I thank you for power. I thank you, Lord, that I've given your people your word. I thank you, Lord, that your, hallelujah, your sheep hear your voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. Thank you, Lord. We bind the works of the flesh. Hallelujah. We crucify the works of the flesh so that we can be your people that you are pleased with. No flesh can glory in your presence. Help us to walk upright. Draw us closer to you, O oh God, so that we can be who you've called us to be. We thank you that there's no big eyes, no little U's. But we are who you've called us to be, period. We are who you've called us to be, period. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the grace upon this word. I thank you that you've touched what needs to be touched. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and thank God. Hallelujah. Listen, I pray this was a blessing to you tonight. Hallelujah. I pray it was a blessing to you tonight. I pray something was said. Hallelujah. That minimum.